excuse the plant out of the, of the middle of the head, but um, that's what happens. It's not me, it's the, uh, it's the, plant. It's the plant. There we are. It's the triffid that's taking over my life <laughs> in the living room. Yes. Here we go. to the variety show of Liam. We are here with ex-member of Jassus and currently have just come back from an American tour for the new uh, tour he's done, Steve Hackett. Hi there. It's nice to talk to you. Excuse the plant out of the, of the middle of the head, but um, that's what happens. It's not me. It's the, uh, it's the, plant. It's the plant. There we are. It's the triffid that's taking over my life <laughs> in the living room. Yes. There we go. We were just talking about that you'd come back from your American leg of this massive world tour that you're undertaking for obviously yeah. the brand new album yeah. and of course Genesis Revisited Seconds Out and Selling England by the Pound. There's quite a lot of that going on. Yeah, there's, there's um, yeah, you know, we've had so many different types of, so many different types of shows. Um, it's been rather extraordinary since I started doing whole Genesis albums. Um, uh, that has engaged the audience in, in a way that's sort of reminded them of what I did in the past. And then the, the new stuff, the solo stuff, as, um, uh, although I suspect when we're on your shores, we'll probably be concentrating pretty much on the Genesis stuff. So um, uh, you know, have to wait, wait a while. Whilst I'm still young uh, to, to hear some of the more of the uh, Genesis stuff, uh, sorry, the solo stuff. I get confused between the two. It's, yeah. There's so much that you go through. It's like hard to keep track of like what at what shows you're actually doing. Exactly. Yeah, I try telling my mother where I'm going to be in the world. Yeah, next week I'm in Greece. Uh, in the next few months or weeks, we'll be on your shores, and also Greece. We'll be doing Borneo. We'll be doing all sorts of stuff going on. So life exists in a suitcase. I still haven't unpacked since the American tour, which. Uh, we arrived on 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 Monday, and uh, here's Friday. I'm I'm still living out of a suitcase in my own home, but that's that's the way things are. No chance to go out and buy a new busted washing machine. So <laughs> it's like it's like yeah yeah, I'm gonna go and stay with family. Can we use your washing machine? That that's the reality. Oh, the glamour of it all, you know. It's. Uh, but I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, life is still very much in the fast lane, very exciting. And um, civilian life doesn't come anywhere near it for me. You know, it's a bit like, here's the sort of small marauding army. And um, it's been so well received. The, the guys have been, uh, have been incredible. And the playing just gets better and better. The performances just get better and better. So I'm thrilled about that. You know, there's an attitude that's been there for a while. As we've now been together as, as a team for some time. Um, uh, there's something that just went incendiary just recently with me sort of goading the guys into doing certain things that they now do live. They don't just stand there and play it. They do other things as well. Nothing yeah. that you wouldn't want to tell your mother about. They keep their clothes on. <laughs> Unlike some musicians I've worked with in the past. But we're not naming names at this point. Mm. Would there be any chances that you'll be going back and continuing the full solo album releases? Like, will you be going back and doing the full of Defector maybe live in the future? Oh, well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I've never considered doing whole solo albums. Um, I will be doing, uh, at the end of the year, or rather September, we start doing, at least in the UK, uh, um, the whole of Foxtrot. And uh, from... 1972, a mere 50 years ago, um, always working on the same song 50 years later. Uh, we'll be doing that, celebrating all of that. Um, there will be a fair amount at some point of revisiting Voyage of the Acolyte. So I'll be um, uh, doing some things from that. I've noticed of late that stuff that I do that is 
perhaps regarded as golden oldies by now, you know, it's no longer competing in, in the marketplace. It's found its audience for those who loved it, and those who loved Hierophant, um, they'll get served. Those who loved uh, Tower Struck Down, they'll get served. Those who liked all the changes of Ace of Wands, which is probably the nearest thing to a fusion thing that I've ever done. Um, yeah, Gothic fusion, there's a new, um, there's a new genre for you. Uh, yeah, I think I will be celebrating the past more um, as I go through life. As I say, I'm only 72, so uh, I've got lots of time. You know, I had a 108-year-old uncle survive until he was 108. So if I managed to keep touring, something like he kept managing to go over to Flanders Field to give speeches as he was the, the, the oldest surviving um, First World War soldier. Um, uh, I, I'm hoping that the family genes come my way from my mother's side of the family. Yeah, we've got a 104 year old who's still going, an aunt who's 104. So um, uh, most guitarists don't seem to perform beyond 94, it seems. Segovia and, and uh, Les Paul both died at the age of 94, both still gigging up to the last minute. So I've, I've got something to beat if there's a marathon going on, never mind the playing. and I adore what those guys did, of course, but um, I digress. Hmm. You are. Uh, you mentioned our uh, death and uh, today, uh, Alan White. Yes, I just, heard, uh, I, I just heard from, from a friend who lives in Seattle, who knew Alan, that he's just departed. And my, the words I said to my wife were, oh, oh no. Um, and we were just writing a, a note of condolence to his wife, Gigi. So um, there we go. Um, that that that's terrible, you know. As as the ranks get thinner of of the uh, what once was the young blades, um, it's an inevitable thing. But it, it seems to have come round much sooner, you know, um, with so many co uh, contemporaries of, of late. Uh, Ian MacDonald, who was a great friend, um, who I credit as being the originator of what we now latterly call progressive rock, you know, the man who on stage when I was watching him in his early 20s, and he was playing just about everything in the book, from one instrument to another, running around, and I thought, oh, this guy is a one-man orchestra, this is extraordinary, I must, I must work with people like this. And all these years later, of course, I did end up working with Ian. Um, and um, but you know there are other people who continue perhaps in the tradition of that. You know we have at least one multi instrumentalist in the band in the shape of Rob Townsend who plays all manner of blown things and also keyboards and was trained as a percussionist so he does those extra things as well and he's extraordinarily gifted. But you know whilst we're talking about those who've passed, um, of course you know Alan. Uh, was a fabulous drama, um, and um, it's terribly sad not only to know that you know that he's passed, but also that extraordinary rhythm section because it was really Chris Squire who who drove the band in the first place, and I'd, I'd worked extensively extensively with him, and of course you know yes, and I've done so many shows courtesy of Cruise to the Edge. Um, yeah, it is, um, it's a sobering time, but you know, those who are still passionate about music and, and, and can still do it, you know, uh, uh, the whole point is, is getting up there and, uh, and doing all of that, but it, it's not been a, a great time for drummers of a certain persuasion and capability. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not great to see people, you know, retiring on their stool or, or or whatever it is. I mean, you've got to just accept that, you know, these people are at their best uh, set the world on fire. Um, and that's kind of what it's all about. Uh, the rest of us, yeah, still keep making a noise for a living. Yeah, <laughs> that's, all it's, well, that's all it is about, really. I mean, with the yeah. Genesis Revisited whole thing, it's all about revisiting that past, bringing it to a new light. I mean, Certainly, jazz is yes. for my gateway band into progressive rock. I, I probably would even know what progressive rock is if it wasn't for Genesis. So, yeah. 
how did you come up with the idea of going back to the past, remaking it, modernizing it, and presenting it to a brand new audience? Well, I think there's an important word that you've used there, modernizing it. Um, I didn't want my band to slavishly reproduce Genesis like a tribute band, which they are not, because um, I give them leeway to you know, change solos, add things, you know, lines that were keyboard that could originally have been brass lines become brass lines. Um, when I've reinvented this stuff and done it on record, um, things that hinted at orchestras became orchestras. Um, so I'd, I'd worked with the Royal Philharmonic on um, a couple of projects and, um, and then, you know, done some of this stuff live with the Heart of England Orchestra at Royal Festival Hall. Um, so it was, it's great to do it, but it's great to update it too and, and make it modern. I, I, I don't want a guy to get up there with the same mask that Peter Gabriel wore in, you know, 1908. There's, there's no point um in in doing that as far as i'm concerned I, I want to keep it vital and keep it alive and saying you know the music used to evolve when we played it live back in the day and it evolved still with the band that i that i have uh, many of whom grow grew up listening to this stuff and uh, and kind of know it backwards pretty much like me with king crimson you know when i worked with ian and we were going to do i talked to the wind um yeah, I, I, I was able to play it straight out with him, you know, when we celebrated that years ago with the Tokyo tapes. Um, and of course, John Wetton who, who passed as well. Um, uh, so, you know, lots of pals in Crimson, lots of pals in Yes. Um, of course, there were parallels with the Genesis music. And the important thing is that it should evolve, you know, perhaps much like passing of another great uh, um, Gary Brooker with Proko Haram, you know, celebrating their work with orchestras, um, getting the angels in, as he used to say. And uh, I, I'd looked forward to, to working with him. He'd given me a name check when he was getting a, an award. And I thought, oh, this is this is marvelous. You know, we'll, we'll get to do something. And then the pandemic struck and, and we were, weren't able to visit each other. And, um, and then of course, before you know, it, it's, it's, um, it's too late. But you know, what survives is, is, the, is the music. You know, not everyone's blessed with the same genes and everything. Uh, what survives is the music, and and, and uh, it, it was a game changer. Um, so much of that stuff, I think. Mm. That's uh, that's uh, that's good to know, and um, you know that you're still continuing to do this music to this day. Um, yeah. What are you looking forward to when you come back to Australia? Anything in particular? Um. Reconnecting with the same place, of course. Yeah, there, there are many things. Um, looking forward to seeing some of the same people and hopefully playing to uh, 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 some others as well. Um, uh, it is a great country. Um, it's extremely varied. I was able to visit um, Uluru last time. Um, do, do the tourist thing, basically. And um, so I think I'd visited some places, maybe that some Australians had managed to get to themselves. and. And um, I thought it was extraordinary, and the nature was 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 fabulous, both in and out of the towns. Um, so, um, yeah, to get to reconnect with all that, well, whether there'll be time to do as much of that, I don't know, because the, the schedule is 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 kind of nuts in my in my life. Um, so many times, I, my feet just don't touch the ground. Uh, but uh, that's just how it is. Um, I'm still playing every day. I love doing that. I'm, I tend to be up very early working. It seems to be my, my best creative time is first thing in the morning before the world starts up. So that's my preferred way of uh, working. That's a way of dealing with jet lag. Don't, don't deal with jet lag, just get on with the job. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably something I could have said to my 10 year old self when I went to America for the first time. Yeah. Jet lag hits you hard. Doesn't oh it? yeah. It, it does, you know, and and, and 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 we have the kind of stuff, you know. My 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 band, um, yeah, you know, they've just been working flat out for so long. Um, 
but I could see that everyone is equally driven with their own with their own things and we've got an international band now so we have two Swedes in the band but one of those lives in Austria and 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 Rob Sachs sax flute woodwind man um multi-instrumentalist he's now living in denmark so um we're in four or five countries uh where we're not working and then when we convene um um it catches fire it, it, it really is incendiary there is there is some telepathy going on which is something i'd always wanted to achieve and now it's happening and and i think to keep the playing incendiary is very important. Whether it's a revisit or if it's something new, you know, sometimes I'll balk against the spirit of of um, of, of, of progressive, where people people might be turned on by say, "Oh, it's too complicated and it's too long and too wordy and this, that, and the other," and keep rock simple and energetic. Now, I would agree that, rhetorically speaking, having this conversation with myself, I would say yes. Keep it energetic. You know, if the energy is there, then you can sell an idea not just to yourself, but also to others. Because if it hits you in the same way that the, the simplicity of great energetic blues hit you at one time, you know, you might say, well, it's great because it's got the teeth of that, but then it's got the surprises of, of unusual bar lengths and outre harmonies or dissonance or all of those things um all of those things that connect it um to to some classical to the more radical modern classical stuff and also to to jazz at its most uh, radical as well so i still think i'm 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 you know i'm sort of maverick radical i'm still hungry for it you know very much and you know music feeds my soul absolutely every day and i discover new things every day uh, playing playing at the moment so i've got three electric guitars that i absolutely adore that seem to do just about everything i recently acquired a, a guitar that was invented by brian may and um, um and brian and i did some stuff on a couple of different projects years ago now um and um i was always thrilled with what he did tonally it seemed like he was, you know, um, perhaps along with Jeff Beck, an absolute tone meister in terms of guitars and their sounds and the way they, they come at you. So his, whoops, <laughs> oh, hang on. something's happened here. Someone's trying to contact, that's our tour manager. So uh, sorry about that, if you've got a brief flash of that's something okay. there. Um, so um, yeah, uh, where were we? Talking about three guitars. One's the Fernandez that I play live that used to belong to Gary Moore. Uh, the other one's the Les Paul, invented by the great man himself, 1957 job. Um, same as the one that Dwayne Allman played in 1957, which I played, funnily enough, when I was in the States. Um, I went to the, the Allman House and, and, and Museum and, and they were letting me play the, the, the Layla guitar, the one that he used on, uh, on that one. Um, and I thought, yeah, well, this is the same as mine. You know, it's got that. These, these these things in the hands of different players of course it's going to change but as i say three guitars there all of which catch fire in different ways the the fernandez has got the endless sustain with no tyranny of volume it's got that with with my um floyd rose tremolo arm so and that's probably the most vocal sounding of of all of the guitars the ooey sort of sound of that the les paul of course is well known Everyone knows what they sound like from, from the mid sixties onwards. Um, and the Brian May one has got the really screamy sort of upper harmonic um, facility. So that's, they're all very alive guitars. So I'm, I'm thrilled to have this collection of, I probably got about 50 guitars and most of them are, are neglected pretty much like Miss Havisham in their cases. But, you know, I, I will get around to them at some point. They, they've all got, they've all got wonderful things. Um, need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I'm an admin also on the side for the Rush fan page, so the Canadian Trivia right. Rush. Um, right. Yes. Alex Lyson states that you're one of his influences for the album Caressa Steel. 
Have you heard much yep. of work from Rush? You know, at all? I have. I, I, I have heard Rush's work, and I think they're absolutely terrific and uh, an incredibly energetic trio. And I, I, I hope there's a future for them, despite, you know, um, losses within the ranks. Um, so it's always lovely, you know, when a terrific musician or band mentions mentions me. Uh, that's great, you know. Um, I think there are tech, maybe the reason why I've engaged guitarists of, of note in the past is probably with the tapping technique, um, which has become, in terms of, if there's a dictionary of rock or heavy metal guitar, yeah, that, that's it. You know, rule number one is you don't have to hit every note. You can hammer on and hammer off with both hands and, um, you could be the fastest guitarist on the planet with that, without ever picking up a plectrum, really. So, again, it's this, you know, don't be tyrannised by what's traditional, but if you can come up with other things, then the chances are this stuff gets passed on to, to other people. So it becomes part of the, um, part of the language. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that you know, uh, that, that, that happened. But beyond that, um, speed, yeah, it's great, but it's a one horse trick. So uh, yeah, you, you too can be the fastest guitarist on the planet. But I think uh, the importance of melody can't be underestimated. And I know I sound like an old stickler with this because a melody can be very, very exciting as well. And the thrill of that. So if there's anything that I'd learned working with Genesis, where we got to influence each other, it was uh, the importance of that. And so we'd, we'd all listen to and indeed worship and learn from master songwriters who um, understood the importance of chords, you know, whether they'd gotten that from their classical roots or whether they'd gotten it from, um, from a more, more contemporary source. But, but the idea of harmony is very good don't have to use it every time but in your armory I think it's great to have to have that you know to be as melodic as the shadows once were and as you know fast and flash as as um, Eddie Van Halen was uh, you know it's all if, if there were different uh, gears in it in a car driven by you to quote um, Brian May then certainly yes speed that's great. Yes, it's great to be able to make it squeal, like sound like a motorcycle and fire off a salvo of notes. But there's also there's also melody and um, uh, you know what's going to engage. Uh, and it may be quite a subtle difference to the idea of some may regard something as a riff, others may regard it as a melody. I'm thinking of of Purple Haze with Jimi Hendrix. You know what an angular sounding riff and um yeah there, there, there's a certain simplicity and you might say that the, the, the goalpost has shifted since then but for me it, it's important to, to cast an ear to mr andrew segovia and mr jimmy hendrix um and um, and take from them what you will because they're two completely different approaches uh, to the to the guitar but if you can have appreciation of of these immensely different styles, um, you'll get an idea that the guitar doesn't have to be a limited instrument. It can be a, a really great writing tool, provided you've got enough of a, of, a, of a knowledge of, or an appreciation of chords, you can do that. At the end of the day, of course, if you start working with the keyboard player, he'll tell you that, that he can, um, access many more harmonies in one go than you can do in a lifetime on a guitar. But the fact is, I think we, we need each other. Instrumentalists need, need each other for you know, what we can all do separately. Uh, when you combine it, um, you too can be a noise machine. When Tony Banks used to want to be able to bend notes like a guitarist, and I wanted to be able to do stretches that keyboard could do. So. We managed to combine the two and 
and successfully do some of these things in harmony for certain moments that 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 took off so yeah part of i think what drove genesis was um keyboard players wanting to be guitarists and guitarists wanting to be keyboard players and um and then of course once you've achieved some of that the idea of working with an orchestra where it's all at your disposal rock band plus orchestra yeah i've been lucky enough to fulfill all of those dreams but they're ongoing mm. You mentioned Tony Banks and uh, that's when yeah. I was first listening to Genesis with the musical mm. box in the interlude yes. before like the final verse chorus, whatever. It always yes. sounded like it was, I think it might have been what I first thought was a guitar solo rather than it was mm. the uh, a keyboard solo that I would find out later on. Yeah, well, um, it's quite interesting because um, for a short while before I joined Genesis, um they after anthony phillips bless him because he's a very clever writer and a lovely guy um when they lost him um they did shows where tony was trying to fill in for the guitar and he used to stick his own piano electric piano through a fuzz box and um I think that's the area that you're talking about. And yeah, so absolutely. there were there, there were moments when you'd be hard pushed to know what was guitar and what was and what was keyboard a lot with Genesis. And I think it was part of the early appeal, the subtlety of that. It's like, yes, what what am I listening to? And we would swap phrases and sometimes do them in unison or harmony. And so that moment you're talking about is a particularly good solo, I think. Um, and uh, and I fitted around that until I do my solo at, at the end. But I think what was important was that we were giving each other space to do that. And um, what, whatever Genesis became later on, where um, there seemed to be an emphasis on vocals to the exclusion of the other things, um, I think it's precisely that area that, that had engaged me, the idea of you know, great instrumentals um that that was the whole point and and you know massive chords that would suddenly arrive on an accent on a, on a push as we used to call it like dance on a volcano and um so yeah surprise with those aspects so um it's something that i'm constantly searching for searching for it then searching for it now the element of of surprise um when an audience first hears something when they're not uh, aware of, of, of what's coming up, but something that's well done by a well-drilled team can absolutely take your breath away. And, and um, uh, that's what makes people want to take up instruments. Like my brother, you know, watching Ian McDonald live. I was 19 uh, watching Ian and my brother was, was, was 14, five years younger than me. And he took up the flute as a result of that um yeah uh one of my favorite albums i actually have it on display the middle one highly strung a yes I do want to try and get that signed so fingers crossed there might be some negotiation up there sure after, yeah, the, yeah. after today <laughs> um yeah you look onto that probably more highly than your previous release cured uh was there something about maybe highly strong that you maybe hold in more higher favor than the previous I, mid 80s release yeah i i'm i'm uh closer in spirit to, to highly strung uh, particularly the track um camino royale um uh, i had a hit single a, a brief hit single with 151 um uh which sort of satisfied the gods of business for five seconds back then but um uh, camino royale which was born of a collaborative effort with Nick Magnus and, um, and, and, and a dream that I had that featured apparent Genesis music. There was this fusion of so many disparate styles and I realized that, that one day um, I'll probably do a version of that with full orchestra and, 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 and give it the, the, the works that it needs, which is to give it a sort of suppers ready type length 
uh, work out because I've done it with jazzers and I've done it um, with proggers, but I, I've not really let an orchestra loose of that. An orchestra will struggle with it because of the timing. Um, the chords are absolutely wonderful, but the timing um, really does require all musicians to be on their metal um, because it's very pushy. And, and if the if if the orchestra lags a bit, you know, I'll probably have to correct them in the uh, in the time honored fashion um, in the studio. But um, nonetheless, I, I think that it's another, in a way, it's a bit like my, my live and let die, um, waiting in the wings to be done at, at the right time. I, and I mustn't leave it too long because I'm, I'm hugely, um, uh, I, I love it. You know, it's both in the spirit of Genesis, Genesis meets New Orleans goes surreal. And that combination of things is absolutely compelling. Um, just like the multifaceted dream that I had at the time, um, uh, where I'd, I'd been in New Orleans and um, I was walking the streets at 3 a.m. And then I, you know, listening to the ghosts and um, and then I, I re-experienced the same scene, but I, I dreamt it. and. It started with walking down the same street and the shutters and, and the wind picked up the shutters started to flutter and the sound of distant jazz bands. And then it blasted into a whole sort of Disney-esque um, vistas and, and, and so many things. I thought, my God, you know, this is, um, this is extraordinary what, what this, you know, potentially touches upon. So I'm, um, I'm looking forward to doing that, and um, um, uh, you know, by the time I've done this, and by the time catches the world catches up, um, it'll be, you know, long after I've gone, I suspect. But I like to think that at some point, um, people will rise to the challenge of music, of of collisions that are possible, of different schools of thought coming together. Um, the music without prejudice, where classical musicians will work with rock musicians. So you'll have uh, the instinctive versus the um, the schooled or, 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 or the intellectual. So yes, so much to be learned from these different approaches. Um, if we can celebrate the best in in music and not be too high bound by the idea of um, uh, fashion and. Um, uh, all of that. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. So I, I sort of lament the passing of an era where in, instrumentalists were, were celebrated more and you have to look to the world of classical music or, or, um, or, or, or film to hear some of this, some of this stuff. Um, but nonetheless, you know, film does throw up enormous possibilities um, as scenes change and sympathetic music expands the frame um there there is a level of thrill that that goes with that as well i mean i realize, realize i'm talking about every subject under the sun all in one go but i think that that you know one thing becomes another one one aspect will um fire up one bunch of musicians or one bunch of writers and then you know someone else will, will pick up on the idea of uh, yes you could have that and dance as well um, uh, all of it, all of the arts, um, if they all come together, um, that's really where I think the, you know, perhaps the mother load is. Yeah. Um, we're just running a bit short on time because the Zoom thing is telling sure. me about our grades. So thank you for, you know, taking our okay. time. I'm sure you're going to it's rest up for the, you know, Australian New Zealand link that is coming up and, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Yes, yeah. Hopefully we yeah. can uh, sort something out, but maybe I can upgrade yeah, I can sign your. I'm sure from, I can sign your album. I'm sure that can be done. Yeah, yeah. for VIP, yeah. Because I was trying to do it on the website, but there's like maybe yeah. still some COVID things in place and I actually can't get the one VIP seat. Really? So. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, um, I apologise about all of that, but um, uh, the fact is, um, I'm sure, you know, with, with the will, everything can be done. Uh, you know, COVID restrictions and protocols are, are changing all the time. 
uh, but you know we managed to come back successfully from the states and um, you know managed to do a tour which was a couple of months long so um, I think all, all, all things are possible uh, uh, this is the busiest time in my life it's the busiest year ever I think um, so um, uh, it, it, it's it, it, it's a thrill to be involved in in it and um, I'm looking forward to coming and uh, yeah you know watch yes. out yes indeed <laughs>